Quando ho giocato con nazionale mondiale, ho fatto gol in 11 secondi. The fastest goal scorer in World Cup history, a golden foot winner, Turkey's top goal scorer, a Galatasaray legend. Not long after his retirement, life has ripped Hakan Shakur off of all of these accomplishments. Today, he's a persona non grata living in exile, an Uber driver, a dirt cheap football coach. You can't help but ask, what the hell happened to Hakan Shakur? From the very beginning of his career to the day he hung up his boots, Hakan Shakur did one thing, and he did it better than a good chunk of people in the entire world. Scoring goals. Well, that and breaking records. Sorry, Leo fans, but Shakur was the original and the undisputed king way before Burek Yolmaz. Five years into his career, he joined Galatasaray in 1992. In three different spells with the Turkish Giants, Shakur changed the score a total of 423 times, with 288 goals and 135 assists in 539 matches. Record goal scorer in Simbom's history. He was both the target man and the initial point of relentless pressing for Gala. He was also the key man in their four-year consecutive title-winning domination in the Turkish Super League, an era that Fatih Tinerman company stopped with a UEFA Cup victory over Arsenal in 2000. And bear in mind that this was way before the Wenger out era. Like, Arsenal were good. We're talking about Patrick Vieira, Dennis Bergkamp, Thierry Henry good. The success he had in yellow and red opened many opportunities in front of Shakur. Although his years abroad weren't nearly impressive, he played for Inter Milan, Parma, and Blackburn Rovers. We haven't even touched on his career with the national team. And he has nothing but records there as well. Shakur is still the top goal scorer for his country with 51 goals in 112 matches. And if you feel like somehow you've heard of his name before but can't quite know how, it's basically thanks to the fastest goal in World Cup history. In the 2002 World Cup, Shakur had scored just 11 seconds into the game, helping the Turks clinch their best ever run at the World Cup by finishing third. With a career like that, you can't help but ask why hasn't the guy received a state medal of distinguished service? But no one could know that his relation with the Turkish state was about to initiate his demise. Three years after his playing days, and to the surprise of millions, Hakan Shakur started a career in politics. Joining the country's oppressive one-man Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Shakur was elected as a member of the parliament in 2011. As much as it was a surprise for him to go into politics, no one second-guessed his decision to join Erdogan's party. After all, it was none other than Erdogan himself who performed Shakur's marriage, back when he was the mayor of Istanbul. He instantly became a polarizing figure, loved and hated to the extreme. People who used to scream his name during playing days were now screaming that he was just a puppet, serving a political agenda. But the criticism he received was nothing in comparison to what was about to happen. He was going to be pressed between two powerful figures, and this was much worse than the man-marking of his playing days. Shakur was an avid supporter of Fethullah Gulen, the leader of the Islamic Gulen movement. The cleric was even the best man at his wedding. But in 2013, he fell from grace from Erdogan after a failed coup attempt by the Gulen movement, and Shakur had to choose a side between the two. This wasn't like picking a corner and smashing it for a penalty. Whether he scored or missed, his life was about to change. Charged with insulting Erdogan on Twitter and being a member of the now terrorist Gulen movement, Shakur thought his days as a free man in Turkey were limited. Torn between leaving everything behind and keeping his freedom, he fled Turkey in 2017 and took up self-exile in the US. Imagine Cristiano Ronaldo tried his hand in politics, got chewed up and spit out, and now can never get back to Portugal in fear of losing his freedom. That's some hardcore shiz. Now in exile, Shakur had to start from scratch. All the money and assets he made during his playing days were confiscated. First, he tried to run a cafe in San Francisco, but quickly went bankrupt. According to Shakur, unwelcome visitors that were Erdogan supporters were the reason for his failure. His next endeavors were even more abrupt. Shakur worked as an Uber driver and sold books in an on-off manner. Now the 50-year-old is trying to build up an online community, making videos on politics and football, sharing them on Instagram and his YouTube channel. And just to stay sharp, he's training young players in his neighborhood free of charge. I have nothing left. Erdogan took everything. My right to liberty, freedom of expression, and right to work. This was the story of Hakan Shakur, a national hero turned public enemy. Regardless of the way you look at it, 
it's surely one of the most bizarre retirement stories in football. 